there. So I just wanted to carry on with the theme of earnest money and some of the ins and outs of how you could potentially lose it if you cancel your contract, uh, not within the time frame that you put for certain areas of uh, inspection and appraisal and that sort of thing. So I'm just gonna go through the contract with you. Now, for anybody out there that has recently tried to purchase a property or has done it in the past, this is gonna be a very familiar form for you. Um, and none of it's filled out. I just wanna show you some of the key areas uh, that will explain a little bit about the process of the purchase. Bearing in mind, I am in Utah. So this is the Utah real estate contract. If you are in a different state, it could be completely different. So this only applies to people uh, within the, the state of Utah. So this is the standard um, real estate purchase contact or REPSI as we real estate agents like to call it. Um, Okay, so the first area here to do with earnest money, as you can see, earnest money deposit. This is where you put how much you're going to hand over within a few days after your contract has been accepted to your um, agent or to the title company or to whoever is holding that earnest money for you. So you need to have that money available to hand over either in the form of a check or cash, usually check. I've never done one with cash, but you, yeah, you have to check that out with the title company or brokerage as to what it is that they're gonna want. Then you have a couple of sections down here as far as um, the earnest money. So the first thing, usually you have two out clauses to do with due diligence and then appraisal. So due diligence is where you get the house inspected, whether it's to do with termites, foundation issues, boundary checks, uh, just the condition of the house to make sure everything works, all any appliances that happen to be staying, like the fridge and the microwave, the oven, garage door opener, all that sort of stuff. So this is where you get an inspector to come in and they inspect the property. And if something comes up that you think, okay, I'm going to see, I'm going to talk to the owner and see if they will be able to either pay for that to be fixed or if they can contribute towards that and I will cover the rest of it. So this is the first time you have the out clause. If you, the due diligence comes back and the inspection shows, okay, there's foundation issues and there's an issue with um, a couple of the appliances and you approach the buyer, or the seller, you're the buyer, you approach the seller and say, hey, look, I need these repaired to be able to move forward with the contract. And they say, no, we're not fixing anything. Um, it's all, you know, as it is, then you can decide either you want to still move ahead with the contract or you want to back out of the contract. As long as you do it within the date that you set in this contract, then you will get your earnest money back unless you've made it non-refundable uh, upon acceptance. But that's another story. So as long as you say, okay, if you're not going to fix these in one week, we want out of the contract, then you can do that. So in here, it goes through all of the terms um, as to what due diligence is, um, the physical condition of the property, the roof, the walls. I mean, it goes into great detail. You can also do a check of the neighborhood to see if there's a, the crime rate, if there's any uh, sex offenders within a certain proximity of your property. And if you're not happy with any of it, you can get out of the contract. So that is always good to check on all of those things because while at the moment, you know, it's June 16th, 2021, the housing market is crazy and a lot of people are wavering the due diligence period and the appraisal uh, clause as well. I personally never recommend it for my clients unless it's a new build because you never know what's going on underneath what you can't see or behind the wall or the PowerPoints or anything like that. So if you don't have that clause in there, the due diligence, then if anything comes up, that's just on you because you wavered that clause. So yeah, thing to keep in mind. There's a lot of things that a home inspection can find out that you won't be able to see just looking at the property. So that's number one, the due diligence. And then there is the appraisal condition. So this basically states 
that whoever you're getting your mortgage through will send a person along to the property to do an appraisal. They'll take the comps, uh, so the comparable market values of uh, surrounding properties that have sold recently and determine the value of your property that the bank would be happy to loan that amount. So say they come in and they do an appraisal, you've offered $350,000 and the appraisal comes in at $320,000, you have the right to either say to the seller, hey, look, the appraisal's coming at this. This is all we can borrow. We need you to drop it from $350,000 to $320,000. The buyer, the seller could go, yeah, okay, we'll drop it because that's fair market value. And, you know, we'll, we'll drop it and match and go to that price so you can go ahead with the purchase. Or, what is happening in this market at the moment is you have to prove that your buyer has funds to go above the appraisal because properties are going with multiple offers that are generally ending up above appraisal. But I still have in the contract the appraisal clause because then you can indicate, okay, if it appraises lower than what I have offered or what my client has offered, then we will go say $10,000 above that, but no more. Um, so yeah, the appraisal clause, if it comes in and the seller is not willing to negotiate or to drop the price to where uh, you can effectively borrow the money from the bank, then as long as you cancel the contract before that appraisal date, you can get your earnest money back. So that is a good, uh, that is two areas, the due diligence uh, clause and the appraisal condition. Now, both of those, everyone who gets a mortgage, well, as far as I'm aware, unless there's some mystery people out there, have to get an appraisal done on the property to get the value for the bank so they know that they're loaning you the money that the house is valued at, as opposed to an amazing amount of money. And then something happens to the house, they're never going to get that amount back because it's only worth what it's been appraised at. I hope that made sense. It kind of was a lot of words in my head. Okay, so now we'll just go down to where the dates are. Okay, so here. So this is a seller disclosure so that the person who lives in the house has to give you a disclosure of, you know, the condition of the house, any faults that they know of, um, and that sort of thing. That has a date on it. So they have to get that to you within, usually it's within less than a week. And sometimes it's already been uploaded to the server um, when the property is listed. Then you have here your due diligence deadline. Now that can be in any time frame, depending on how quickly you can get uh, your home inspector in there or any other professionals that you need to get in there to do an inspection. So I like to do it, you know, to give myself at least a week, if not longer, depending on how busy everything is to get that done. Then you have your financing and appraisal deadline. So that means that you can secure your financing and get the appraisal done. As long as you can get it done before that date uh, that you put in there, and if something comes up, then you still have the right to cancel. And then you have the settlement deadline here, which can be, you know, a few days after the financing and appraisal, or it could be a week or it could be longer, depending on, you know, who you're getting your finance through and, and all of those sorts of things. So that is the basics as far as how you can get your earnest money back if you decide to back out of the contract for whatever reason, if you have those clauses in there and you haven't wavered those rights. I, I hope I haven't rambled too much and I've made sense. If you have any questions about the contract um, and you're already working with an agent, just sit down with them and get them to explain it to you. Because as an agent, we can, you know, write up multiple contracts, you know, every day or every week. So you, we might fly past something and to you, it's like, oh my, I don't understand. What, what does she mean by due diligence? What is that? What do I have to do? How much is it going to cost me and those sorts of things so just make sure you sit down and go over that with your agent um, or if you're working with me uh, I, I sit down and go over everything and make sure that you understand because these can change from time to time so you may not have bought or sold a house in 10 years this would have changed since then so always sit down go over it with your agent and ask questions ask as many questions as you are uh, as you want and know that there is no silly question 
So that's how to get your earnest money back um, as long as you get it done in the time frame that is written in the contract and what due diligence and appraisal means. I hope that helps and I haven't just confused you anymore, but anyhow, that is another segment on terms that we deal with as in real estate agents. So Repsy, real estate purchase contract, and that is the uh, first contract that you send off to make an offer on a property. Stay safe out there and I will spot you guys on the next video. Bye.